and I'm welcoming you, welcoming you today to uh, Mariano's keynote. Um, at Mural, our mission is to empower imagination workers wherever they may be. And today, I'd like to introduce uh, Mariano Suarez Baton, the CEO and co founder of Mural. Mariano will be discussing the challenges and opportunities for, for imagination workers, as well as resources to help foster growth and innovation in the community. We're going to kick it off right now, and Mariano will go through his talk, and at the end, uh, we'll have a QA period. So get your questions ready, and now I'll pass it over to Mariano. Thank you, Justin, and that was beautiful Spanish. So hello, everyone. Good morning or good evening, whatever you might be. As Justin was mentioning, we have a big, bold mission around powering, powering up imagination workers globally. And that means a bunch of things. One is inspiring, inspiring everybody with a brain to use their imagination. We believe everybody uh, has a big imagination, that, but they just forgot about it in school. We also believe that visual methods are a very important common visual language that we should all have as modern workers. Collaboration should be able to happen anywhere, not limited to a room. And of course, facilitation, right? as a key component of collaboration as a way to level us up. So, as part of that mission, uh, we also, besides providing software, try to bring community around us, right? And all of you belong to that community. And we, we try to gather brilliant minds in the community to help us uh, share what's going on out there in the world of uh, modern work. And this time of, again, a global pandemic, right? Where we're seeing a lot of people rethinking what work means and how to better adapt work to uh, what their needs are. And in particular, we like to think about the opportunities and challenges that we can see, that we see in the market around bringing imagination or visual thinking and collaboration uh, to the world. And we, we, we see a lot of challenges and, and the good news is that uh, there's a lot of people like you out there that are overcoming these challenges I wanted to share a little bit about that throughout uh, our talk today. And most importantly, I want to share this quote by Ivan, where he's inviting us also to, again, use this, this moment to, to open up to curiosity, to play, and be able to explore different ways of doing things. I think this is something that is important for all of you as you introduce this way of working to many other people that might be less prone to change. So, imagination. So these little weird things in here are the characters that I was sketching, I don't know, 10 years now, when we first started Mural. I was a game designer. We had a video games company that we sold to a company called Playdom and then to Disney. And we were coming up with the next game. We had a soccer game, I'm Argentinian, so we had to do a soccer game, very popular, 20 million people played it in 2010. And I needed to create the next one, right? And I had this, this game about emotions in my head. The game would change depending on people were tweeting or feeling around the world. And your job was through dance, through these creatures, bring them back to balance. So it was early on in, in this process. This, this game was never produced. One day I, I probably want to do it as a work of art. But what I did do was start putting ideas or, or things that I had inside my, my head into then a PowerPoint deck with characters, environments, and mechanics and storyline into um, this PowerPoint deck that helped me see and think through the idea. The problem that I had though is that I was flying around Silicon Valley, Argentina, and I needed it to be a digital medium because I needed to collaborate, this was 10 years ago, with my, my team in, in Buenos Aires. But every time that I shared this keynote, people would be like, first of all, confused because the keynote was very linear when I was delivering this message, but also I didn't get the possibility and the feeling for them to co-create with me. They thought, 
that whatever was there in the keynote or PowerPoint deck was final. There was no permission, no affordance in the medium to get your hands dirty and, and change it and contribute to it and uh, give more and different perspectives to it. So something that we are, I mean, that's the core of why we started Mural is that we believe that there should be space for imagination. And space, of course, is physical or virtual in this case, but, but space is also time. Space is also a moment, especially in this context of remote work, where you need to like leave some room to think, to observe, to download your ideas. And I, and I think that it's an important um, part of, of our jobs, because if not, we're just optimizing. We're not coming out with the possibilities. We like to talk about imagination workers, right? So people that see the world in a different way first, but then of course, gather teams, multidisciplinary teams around them to be able to make these things happen. The great news is that in the last 10 years, five years, there's been a lot of movements around visual note-taking first, but then visual thinking, visual collaboration. We have part of, 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 of the, the talks coming on. Oli and Loa will give another talk on the building blocks of visual thinking and visual collaboration, how to basically draw very basic stick figures or star uh, people to express things, express not just big ideas, but also you know, processes, changes in culture. Anything can be described visually and can be understood visually much better than if it's just inside your head and you talk about it. There's also crash courses that we're doing that we recommend that you, you check them out and sign up. There's a lot going on also in our backstage passes as part of our learn section. They should also enjoy, they're all free. And Mark and Haley and our team did a phenomenal job in bringing this type of uh, exercises for you to practice with your teams, but also by yourselves, because I believe that, that you should be enjoying your time thinking and creating by yourselves too. So when we were when we were like putting this this initial versions of Mural out there, we started with um, again a very loose open space for peers of people to be able to collaborate on something new with the affordance this we, we talk about flexible structure right so like the possibility to just start with, from something very chaotic and start shaping it a little more. But what we learned when we were in IDEO, when we observed them working with the guys from Steelcase also, is that the world had already evolved. There were already a lot of methodologies, right? Those common in the double diamond, but then empathy maps, customer journey maps, different formats of two by twos, all organized in what we now know about, I call it like design thinking or if it's a little more process-driven design sprints that not only allow for imagination work to happen, but also make it better. And make it better because of a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a guided way of communicating, collaborating, and creating with a multidisciplinary team. Right? Most of the innovations that we're going to bring into the world, like big iPhone innovations, but also like mean improvements to certain processes, we generally need someone else. And I believe that these methods can become, will become, and are becoming, to be honest with you, standard in our language. They're becoming a visual language that we use. And we're starting to see many more people walk to a meeting, virtual or not, and say, oh, yeah, that's a customer journey map. Oh, yeah, that's an empathy map, or that, that's a UX flow. And I get it, I understand it. And you don't need to be explaining over and over as we had to explain it over and over five to 10 years ago. These guided methods are accelerating and inviting everybody that not, might not come intuitively uh, a good imagination or, or, a, or bring a, a good creativity, but it allow, allows them to play along, right? Like a rock band, high school rock band, trying to jive together. They're not just music, musicians just yet, but at least they give them the guided and the confidence to at least play the game, right? So that the stars in you, your facilitators, your designers, 
you're going to be like making this, this, this happen. But as you bring in these people in as part of the method, first of all, they give you a different perspective. But then as Jean Litka talks about it, talked about it, and we continue to talk about it in multiple books, she believes, and I believe that too, that design thinking is a social technology that right? allows us as teams, as, as, as a bureaucracies, as you told, to change how we work. And she believes that the same thing can be like total quality management many years ago that gives people the empowerment to be able to innovate and don't need to ask for permission or go to the innovation center to do it, right? As more people feel more or less comfortable working in this way, they're gonna be able to innovate much better. So I encourage you guys to consider how in your own groups, in your own teams, in your own companies, you define the set of methodologies that you truly believe in and use it over and over and over and over again, because that's the only way they're gonna get better as a team. Something that Jean shared in her last webinar with her, I recommend you watch everything that she put together and it's all recorded, check it out. But she starts by this idea of design thinking and I'm bundling what design thinking means in different steps. But also she recently uh, talked about her research that she found that people and teams, the most important part of, of design thinking, because there's a lot of detractors of course, is that not about like, getting them anybody like a non-designer to become an expert designer and replace designers because designers are very important and their their craft is unique now but having people being like rookies and turn them to like i mean mid-level players the impact on the results was astounding so recommend check out this because it'll give you talking points on how to pitch for this type of work inside your company We've also gathered great speakers, right? Guys from C Prime, Voltage Control, on sharing how to, in the case of Design Dashes, make these meetings be more compact and getting to decisions faster. Jim just shared on jobs to be done, our head of customer success. And also recommend that you check out the presentations by uh, Luma uh, because they have been able to put together a system of methodologies that you could take yourself and use as common visual language to deploy in your company. And then please check out Playmakers, a new section that we added in our website with um, people, right, that have methodologies that you can uh, use, take advantage, and maybe bring them as part of your toolbox and your common visual language. Imagination. Guided methods for imagination. But of course, we've been observing this for a while, right? So these methods were mostly created, coined, popularized, but folks that had the luxury of being together in beautiful offices, great project rooms for a long period of time. That wasn't the reality for most of you well, six months ago, right? There was friction, you had to fly, I mean, stay for a bunch of days in a hotel, get together in the project room. The meetings were mostly exciting, but this happened every once in a while. So you didn't get to like jive all the time. Plus these workshops were costly. What we're seeing for the last what, four, five, six months is that the world entered a global pandemic and that forced us to go home stay home and work from home. So everybody is now embracing remote work, but not everybody doing it willingly, right? A lot of people are suffering a lot. I mean, it's not easy to in engage with people through a screen. Like, it's not natural. We're as human creatures, social creatures, we like to gather around the fire pit, right? But it's a reality that we need to brute force our way through. But I truly really believe that there's advantages to it. Right? A lot of people are, are, are thinking, how do I jump from and I mean, becoming a, in the, the early adopters, like you get it, but we need to help the people that are not that savvy with technology or not, in the, like, how do we help them go through the custom of early, of, of, of product adoptions or 
social technology adoption, right? So we're seeing this pattern of reaction in conversation with people. And they say, before the pandemic, we didn't believe that remote workshops could happen. During the pandemic, thank you for existing because it helped us keep on going. But we're seeing something very interesting. They are unlearning and relearning fast. They're realizing that there's benefits also to be able to work in this very visual, immersive, high energy work, but also doing it digitally and more fluidly and not needing to travel to spend all this time and so on, right? We're seeing some things going on. For example, well, first of all, IT in accelerating the standardization of technology to allow for everybody to work securely and properly from their homes, right? In poor IT organizations, in, in, in global corporations have been working really, really hard as many of you have. But the nice thing is that there were best practices before this too, right? Uh, we have, I mean, AB, IBM is one of our biggest deployments, biggest means, and they did a really good job five years ago already on standardizing, making official a set of tools that they use and bless so that everyone in the company can take advantage of. And of course, people are, 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 are jumping into this and saying, oh, it's a technology thing. And because again, at its core, it is. The first layers are connectivity, security, hardware, of course, video conferencing, but then there's many other things that need to be, be there. But people are realizing it's not just about technology. And you guys know that, right? It's about changing how we work. And first of all is rethinking the workshop. This guy that told me, I mean, help us survive, he realized that they don't really need eight hour or two day eight hour workshops, right? We, we, we invented that in the past because yeah, we had to fly everybody. So let, let's maximize together time. The reality is that most of those eight hour days were eating muffins, drinking coffee, building rapport and camaraderie, but not really, really working, right? And of course, it's important to get together and we recommend it, right? It's part of what we do as a company ourselves, a global retreat this year, we'll probably miss it, unfortunately. But the reality is that once you get into create problem solving mode, you don't really need to wait three weeks or two weeks for everybody that needs to be in that meeting, in that workshop to be available because you can find chunks of time, of course, because the calendars are busy, but also because of time zones, right? Especially you guys that have team members all over the world, you may have like two or three hours per day only to live collaborate. So people are starting to realize that they can unbundle workshops when there's like solo work, there's together work, solo work, together work, and so on. And people are realizing that by doing this, and of course, saving the time traveling and so forth, they're able to run, in this case, a, I mean, a Fortune 10 company CIO group. I said, before the pandemic, I was able to run one of these workshops per week. Now, I'm able to run seven of these per week. So we're seeing a productivity boost because of two things. One is the digitalization and, and the possibility to work faster and unbundled, but also people are coining the, these methodologies and using them over and over because they're digital. They're digital, they're there. You press a button, you get started, right? And most importantly, people that use it over and over, you don't need to start the first 30 minutes of your workshop or your meeting explaining what the method, methods are because you already did your work teaching them, using them beforehand. And now when you're together, they're ready to go. And once these methodologies, these templates, these workflows work, they're digital, they're, be, they're copy and pasteable. Remember, mural.co slash playmakers. You can check out how some of the best in the, in, in the business do it. Get in there, check them out, copy, paste it. Book it into your, into your toolbox. I believe that there's gonna be like a productivity boost after this pandemic because people are gonna be learning from each other much faster and embracing methodologies much faster. There's of course something that needs to happen, which is understanding it's hard, right? It's hard, there's loneliness. Some people 
I mean, the, the extroverts need to talk to each other. The introverts might go to the extreme of depression. So there's a lot of um, human factors that need to be involved here. That uh, it's about that that part of like not not possibility to, to like build rapport with people and so forth. Again, there's things that can be done around that. Icebreakers, right? Energizers, making time not just for imagination, but making time for also having fun and playing around. Uh, and and we have a lot of those that we have put in, in templates and they can be copied and pasted. So make collaboration from anywhere easy. It's our job, it's your job as early adopters as part of our community to make it easy for the folks that are learning both how to work in this way and doing it remotely in the context of a global pandemic. So we need you. And we asked John to share some of that. In policy saving has gone through big changes a company services company that they were used to being in person with the clients and now they can't and they had to adapt and that pass and he shared that story there of course same situation keep promoting backstage passes in our team bringing in others and by the way if you're interested in sharing something please reach out because we want this to be a communal experience each one of you has probably like little tidbits here and there that are necessary to be spread out around the world. And then there's also um, already people have their comments on which is the stack of technology you need. But remember, it's not just technology, it's also methodologies and coining these methodologies to become standard through your organization. Which gets me to facilitation, right? Facilitators, and facilitation. So facilitators, we care deeply about. Why? Well, when we started Mural, we thought of the type of work that we support as, as a very peer-to-peer -peer type uh, work, right? I mean, we're all like, I'm a like, product engineer, designer, like, improvising and jiving together like a jazz uh, quartet. But the reality is that we observed right? People getting into this type of work and there was always someone or a few people that were guiding these people, right? They were teaching them. They were like helping them think differently and so on. And then when people got advanced, same, right? They, they took them from good collaborators to amazing because they help us navigate this, this, these problems really fast. And the reality is that facilitators as full-time jobs are gonna be becoming more and more popular, but facilitation as a competency is something you and I, as meeting leaders, do all the time. We may be not thinking about it. We may be not preparing properly for the meeting. We might not be good at it. I'm sometimes good, I'm sometimes not good, to be honest with you, but it's something that we all need because we all work in teams, right? And even though there's asynchronic work and that will happen, a lot of the time we'll still be working synchronically, building on top of each other's ideas, discussing, generating conflict between our half ideas to make something bigger. So when it comes to facilitation and facilitators, right? We've been uh, embracing this. So first of all, these are the people that bring in the methodologies and teach them to others. But also, we're seeing a lot of facilitators struggling in this context of this pandemic. And if you are one of those, reach out to us because we have a, a set of, of programs that we can help you out with in gearing up your confidence as a remote facilitator because there's people that were saying, no, 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 I'm great in person with the people. People pay me a lot to do this in person, but now they can't, right? And they're struggling. But I think that there's gonna be a lot. And by the way, if you wanna hire one of them, let us know because there's a big community of you guys that we can also connect you with. So facilitators, right? We made a talk, a conversation with Erin Hauber at, at, at the SAA the other day. It's gonna be published really soon. And they are hiring full-time facilitators and they have a program on how to hire them, how to find them uh, and, what, and how important they are to introduce these methodologies to someone else. Of course, we have facilitation superpowers, 
right? Most recent one, one of my favorite features in Mural, the possibility to celebrate. It's really hard to celebrate remotely. The other day, we wrapped up our quarter as a Mural as a company. We shipped boxes to everybody out there with a little mimosa kit, a little of those like party pop purse and so forth. This is one of the things that I told you before about like uh, the, um, the, the, the remote work life, right? It's really hard to hug someone remotely or give them a pat in the back and things like that. Make time for that celebration too. Brute force it in and also enjoy the rest of the facilitation superpowers. So we give software, but we also give access to the best in the, in, in, in the business, right? These guys, so Ross, over in the UK, the guys from Explain are helping with some of the visuals in this presentation. And then of course, Randolph at Cantina. And Lee, especially Lee, Lee has to facilitate meetings in one of the biggest corporations around the world, right? With a lot of people, 400,000. So there's different types of people there. So he has a lot of interesting uh, stories there and how he brings in confidence to, to, to the room. And then don't forget to check the facilitator superpowers and more on Backstage Pass. So how does it all come together? Okay, we believe that you need to leave space for innovation, right? Imagination work is important and these guided visual methods are a way to bring imagination work, visual work to everyone in your company. We keep doing more and more and more thought leadership. Thank you for the timer. Now you know I need to wrap it up. New feature with a, the with a sun. And then collaboration should happen anywhere. We shouldn't be confined to a project room to be able to innovate from there. It should be happening any moment, any I mean, at, all, at, all, at all times. And facilitation as a way to level up that collaboration to help us all achieve better things together. This is what we believe in. This is what we're obsessed about. This is what we're focused about. And what we also believe in is that we, you know, I, I joke around, it's the Jenny, Jerry Maguire thing. All facilitators out there, all playmakers out there, you complete us, right? The software is not, I mean, it's just software, right? It's all, I mean, people hire Mural to help them go through creative problem solving uh, activities with their teams. And of course there's visualization, of course there's whiteboarding. And in the case of you that work in, in, in large organizations, deploy best practice at scale and build the creative confidence or imagination confidence on one side, but also the remote work confidence on the other side, because it's hard and it's hard to do them all at the same time. So thank you for, for, for listening to me and we need you to keep on going with us so that we can help the rest of the, of, of the world right, right now that is struggling to be able to get better at this type of work and also do it remote. So now I think we're gonna be going through some questions uh, that hopefully uh, I can reply. All right, thank you, Mariano. Uh, that was great. Let me pull up some questions for you uh, from our audience. I'm gonna start with uh, Eric. Uh, Eric had a question. He said, uh, hi, Mariano. Fully agree with what you were saying about design thinking. Uh, this relates very much to ideation of new products and services. But how about the next step? prototyping and building the solutions. Do you have insights to which extent uh, and how, for example, Scrum and Agile, Agile teams use Mural? Sure. So I like the quote from Jeff Kotkel that says something like, um, Agile has no brain. And it's a little challenging, but the, the, the idea behind him is that Agile help us coordinate into a quickly a releasing, testing with the market. And of course, a culture of continuous learning, a continuous improvement. But it, early on, it was missing the component around the user, right? I mean, there was a product owner that had like the, 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 the needs, but the nice combination comes with design thinking, human-centered design, humanity-centered design, anything that helps us observe the desirability, right, in the market, combined with the possibility to execute it properly and fast and iteratively. So yes, we see a lot of agile practitioners getting into Mural to do two things. One is um, do their 
and planning exercises, retrospectives, a user story mapping, and so on. But interestingly, they're bringing they're, they're being brought in also by designers, product managers, and so on, so that they can be participating more and more and more early on in innovation, imagination. Because an engineer's mind early on will give a new, a, a new set of possibilities to that team. That's why the importance of the multidisciplinary team early on, because the ideas shouldn't come just from the design. Right? So we're seeing uh, engineers coming in early on and embracing the, fo the full thing. So understanding the problems, I mean, going deeper and selecting which problems to focus on, learning more how to think about the customers and empathizing more, doing alignment diagrams, either customer journey maps, experience maps, jobs to be done maps, depending on the team, what they prefer. Then going into brainstorming possibilities, voting on which ones they're gonna go after, and then crafting a blueprint of whatever is gonna be their experiments that are gonna be running in the sprint. So we like to think that it's like a nice full arc, and then the, the, the product managers out there generally combine that with some sort of plan, like a PI plan or, or a timeline of, of, of a roadmap of sorts. So you see a combination of use cases in design, lean, planning, and agile. Very good. Uh, I have a question from Gretchen. Uh, Gretchen had this to say, hi, Mariano, this is great, thank you. Can you please speak to the fatigue that is also occurring as a result of working from home? Uh, we're working all the time on Zoom using Mural and PowerPoint, et cetera. Uh, it's part of how we get people across the chasm. Sure. So yeah, I mean, we, we are, I mean, we're working from home, we're working remotely. We're working from home remotely in the context of a global pandemic. Right, so our, we have I mean, a, a big team of, of, of people in, in Argentina. Argentina is still in lockdown. I mean, these guys are doing an extra effort right now to not go nuts, right? That they're locked down in their homes. Uh, so yeah, empathy, right? So I mean, that, that's where it all starts, right? Not only for innovation, but also for your own team. So that's why like the moments around uh, these icebreakers, sometimes we ask, hey, how are you feeling today? Right? Or what do you wish to do when the pandemic is over? Or talk a little bit, not just about work, but about life, right? I mean, the reality is that we're all humans and we don't just work. If we're all working all the time, it's boring, right? Because I think this is like a, a say about that, the dull boy or something. Makes work and no play makes Jack the dull boy or something like that. So it's just like putting it out there and, and probably you don't you don't need to work as much right and this starts from the beginning around flipping it and thinking of it as a objectives and outcome driven and not so much about output right um I'm, my voice is like this though because I'm, I'm saying all this but it has been demanding for me i've been talking a lot through a screen i've been doing <laughs> speech therapy sessions to to let to teach me how to how to think and so on how to think not how to speak speak uh, so it's hard, but we try to make moments. We tried like last Friday. We tried to say, let's not work today. Let's force it because it's hard. Yeah, you're always close to the computer, right? You're always close to the phone. So it is hard. Just embrace it and, and put it out there. Make it a topic of one of your ice breaking exercises. Just in your mute. Sorry about that. Next question we have is from James Thomas. Uh, he had that, he had this to ask, where do you see the development of Mural uh, as far as the functionality and the tool itself or integration with other tools? So we like to think about Mural in, in, in three layers when we think about the product, right? So there's a the visual thinking canvas, right? So the, the diagramming, the tagging, the filtering. We're going to be doing much more in helping you play with information to help the, so that you, I can give you patterns. I right? maybe like you see things in a different way. We're plugging in with IBM Watson very soon, for example, to like you know, find interesting uh, patterns in images, for example. On the other side, 
uh, we see a lot around, so, so again, in the sense of, of uh, that, integrations are key. We're, we're working hard to be able to uh, pull in content and render content from anywhere, right? Pulling in content and render content, uh, talking about Agile, we're, we're planning a, a Jira integration that's gonna be really, really cool, both for backlog grooming, but also for after the session is done to make sure that you have all of your to-dos or user stories uh, in, done in Jira. And there's gonna be much more there. Uh, to be honest with you, that's one of the areas of the product that it's advanced than others. But you, you, you're seeing more, we plug in uh, Google Drive, there's many things around rendering content. And then the other part of the product that we see based on the user is this facilitation layer, right? Be able to uh, and set the timer, voting. Now we're, we're experimenting with starting calls from the canvas, the celebration that I showed you and so on, right? So there's gonna be more integrations with calendar probably, more integrations with, with things that help you hook this part of the, of the working process into whatever workflows you have right now. So expect a lot there. And the other part, which is key for us for integrations is uh, if you're using you know, IBM Enterprise Design Thinking or Luma or many other of the, of the methods out there, be able to deploy them at scale and be able to track who's using them, give them uh, tips and tricks and also be able to connect facilitators with people that might be running meetings. So integration with, call it like a professional network. So there's many more things going on and stay tuned because I'm gonna be doing a Q&A session with Agustin, our head of product, where we're gonna be talking about what's next in our product roadmap. All right, next we have a question from uh, Toby. Uh, Toby asked, how do you recommend quickly getting a group up to speed with using Mural when they're coming together for a limited time. So for example, a remote board of directors meeting. So you shouldn't introduce Mural in your remote board of directors meeting, right? There's too much at stake there. There's tension. You bring them something new and, then, and they're gonna be like automatically saying, eh, no, unless you carve out time. In general though, what we recommend is that do something remotely. It's not, I mean, now you don't need to wait for the event. You can do like a 15 minute session the week before just to play, right? And so guys, we're gonna be doing a little exercise in preparation for a board meeting next week. We need you 15 minutes of your time and come here, sign up to this thing or no, don't sign up. Right now you don't need to sign up to Mural to use Mural, right? You know that through the visitors. Um, and make an exercise. So introduce yourself, add a picture of you, maybe draw something with icons here, right? Ross Chapman put together a, an icebreaker that's available in mural.co slash playmakers, which is like a, a, I mean, dress up your, your doodle. Have them be able to feel comfortable in this Zoom all interface, fool around, crack a laugh, so that then when you come to the meeting, you, you have that vibe in it, and then you, they, they feel comfortable in the virtual environment. Don't have them, you know, there's, if not, there's too much cognitive load. You need to learn a new environment, a new tool moving around and pay attention to the actual board meeting. So if you don't have time before that, at least carve out time, like the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just play around. And people encourage humor, right? People like to laugh, like to play, and that would bring a lot of creative juices going. Speaking of creative juices, Mariana, we had a question about music or no music during silent activities. I don't know, play, experiment, see what yeah. your, your team likes, right? The good news is like, you can ask them, hey, do you like the music? And they say, no, nah, turn it off. It's like, okay, turn it off. <laughs> um, so something that you talked about with the uh, comment about the board of directors is, or hinted at, and you, you hinted at this in the keynote is asynchronous versus synchronous work. What do you see as some of the benefits of, of asynchronous work? And then what are some of, the, some of the challenges that come along with that? And how, the, how are those challenges being addressed? Sure. So first of all, 
it is needed, right? I mean, I mean, we, we need to all work solo, heads down, to actually produce the work, right? It's, it's not just us, like thinking, planning, reflecting, innovating, co-creating, ideating. At some point, we need to build a prototype or, or a storyboard or a video or a document or a strategy, something that's actually crafted to be delivered and put out in front of people. So that, that is necessary. Now, in the context of meetings though, there, I mean, folks at Steelcase talk about informative, evaluative and generative moments of meetings or meetings by themselves. I believe that uh, education is innovated more than a business in the context of the flipped classroom approach. But they realized early on that made no sense for lectures or reading or watching videos to be happening in the classroom. The classroom is amazing for project work, for actually doing things together. So I think that one important thing is like not using the first 30 minutes, maybe an hour of a meeting to just read through stuff or watch materials or watch a video. It's not necessary. Right? There's, there needs to be discipline to come to a meeting prepared for that, right? So sometimes maybe the first steps is, okay, let's use 15 minutes now to touch base. But the reality is that I've been in a lot of meetings where the first 15 to 30 minutes, I'm very disengaged because I'm aware of the context and the content, and also probably aware of, let's call it like when, when people are educating others on WhatsApp, customer journey, whatever, I zone out. The reality is like, I don't wanna be there. I mean, I'm not energized, right? So I think that there's room for to think of the meeting designed in a way that you maximize generative and evaluative things to make decisions or to come up with things. Informative parts, and that seems to be like a good asynchronous mode. Now, the other part about asynchronicity, not big, but, but small, is that best practice that we've seen in the design sprint, for example, which is solo post-ups, right? It's important because of multiple things. First of all, you want individuals that are there, they're there for a reason, right? You want them to be freely opening up and, and posting up all of their observations or ideas first. Because if not, it's always the, the, I mean, the most uh, I mean, talkative people that get to I mean, I mean, grab the mic, right? So we want everybody, even the, the, the most introvert people to like add their stuff because there's very going to be probably like a lot of nice friction when a lot of different people can post up. So there's also like that, that, that part of asynchronous and synchronous. And think it through, through, think through your meetings, design your meetings to take advantage of synchronous, synchronous asynchronous, solo teamwork, informative, evaluative and generative moments. Very, excuse me, very good. We'll take uh, maybe two more questions and, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, a question, um, a question from Jack, he said, hi, how would you explain to your client about the importance of imagination and its relation to making better work and decisions later? Sure, so imagination without visualization makes no sense, right? So uh, the idea, we talk about imagination work, but the reality is that it's important to be visual. It's important to, to, to put it out there, right? If it's inside your, your head, it makes no sense. So I think that there's exercises for that. And I think all, it's, it's one of the easiest ones is to do um, a, some sort of like an empathy map or a customer journey map, right? You don't need to be like really fancy on your drawings and so forth. And that one also it's about empathizing and observing more, more than just creating. So it's easier, right, to observe that. But we see a lot of people saying, oh, I didn't think of it that way when they, they, they see the diagram. So these alignment diagrams, maybe they're not super fancy and visual and, and crafted. So like, it's not what you expect like imagination, but visualization of, of what's there and a joint perspective, it's already enough for them to say, oh shit, I understand it. And, and then you get into the generative imagination. But just do it. It's impossible to talk about this, right? That's a reality. Just do it. 
We have a we have a number of questions that that are about how people could contribute successes to uh, and share their successes with the community. Uh, and I'm curious if you had any thoughts on uh, how they might best do that and what you would recommend that they do. Mm -hmm. So we can help amplify. I mean, we have a, like a very broad community that people are paying attention and that care. Um, so reach out to us or publish it in written format or video. Just put it out there. Right? Don't, don't keep it to yourselves. It's important because of two reasons. One is, again, gives you confidence. But the other one is that uh, those stories are going to be the ones that other people pick up in your companies, in your teams, uh, and get jealous about. They will want to do it like you, right? So yeah, put them out there, reach out to our team. We'll help you broadcast them. Very good. I, I think we're going to wrap up now. Uh, Mariana, do you have any, any last words for the, the audience? Thank you. Uh, bring in, play, have fun. Work is not about work. Where work should be fun. And thankfully we have computers getting better at uh, computing, right? So we're gonna be able to outsource the boring part of work and most of the work in the future will be around imagination and collaboration. That's what makes us human, right? Like we, I mean, almost sapiens like we're able to like picture the future and communicate with themselves into small teams to be able to innovate, right? So uh, yeah, it's gonna get better. It's gonna be fun. Hang in there. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We have much more content to share with you uh, from the Mural Imagine program, as well as all the things that we're doing at Mural. You can find that content at mural.co. Uh, and as Mariano said, if you are interested in, in sharing things, please reach out to us. Uh, we would love to amplify your voices, but don't hold back, get your voices out there and uh, build and, and share with the community. Thank you and join us again. We'll have more coming soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.